is the source of reality. In nature, light is the source of reality. In Paris, one can see a retrospective of that famous painter, the father of divisionism or pointillism, a technique which consists in painting juxtaposed points of pure color. Seen from afar, these small dabs of pure color blend together optically in one's eye and become a homogenous image. A visionary artist sera anticipated by half a century modern techniques of color separation used in photo composition, television, and digital images. Using Chevreau's chromatic circle, the extensive knowledge of light he acquired sketching the numerous characters on the friezes of the Parthenon, and his studies on the works of Poussin and Ingres, Seurat, barely 24, works away passionately at his dream to invent scientific art. Seurat's drawings are essential to his work. He uses almost exclusively the Conte crayon for its wonderfully soft, rich blacks. His stroke is short and full. He captures the intimacy of his models in a deliberate style which expresses the dreamlike and allows detail to dissolve into a misty fog. He and his friend Paul Signac frequently visit the studio of Puvis de Chavannes, whose subtle revolutionary transformations of the classical style they admire. The two young painters help the master transfer his sketches onto murals. De Chavannes pleasant land inspires Seurat's bathing at Anières. He will travel many times to the island where he will make sketches for his famous painting, Sunday afternoon on the island of Grande Jatte. If you paint 14 hours a day, six days a week, Obviously, it's because painting is a vital necessity. Through this relentless work, I try hard to discover a new technique, a style all of my own. I dream of a science of painting which can be taught like music, a color scale that can translate the effects of light. Using Chevreuse chromatic circle, I apply minute dabs of complementary colors which are blended optically in the eye and which translate the shimmering effects of light, a mysterious light that reveals textures, curves, volumes, and the dimensions of space. You want me to drop you on the north bank as usual, monsieur? Hmm? Yes, that's right, please. The painter does not see reality as others do. His eye translates the invisible and uncovers the true nature of what he looks at. Would you pose for me? <laughs> Why do we call willows with hanging branches weeping willows? Is there something inherently sad about descending lines? Don't move, no. don't move, please. Mm -hmm. I would never have imagined. Painting a prince, a duchess, that I understand, but the boatman of Anier, I'm, I still can't believe it. But that's the future of art, my friend. You must paint life anywhere you can find it. On a river close to the hustle of factories. And you paint life in that box of cigars? Oh, no, no, it's only an oil sketch. The box protects the fresh paint while it dries. When I'm back in the studio, I transpose these same sketches onto a big canvas. I've been working on this painting for almost a year. <laughs> you really got your heart and soul in this, haven't you? All right now, keep still a minute. Oh, it'll be just perfect. I have finally finished Sunday afternoon on the island of Grand Jatte. 
For this painting alone, I've done 29 preliminary drawings and 34 oil studies. I've left nothing to chance. I've undertaken to rid art of its hesitations. The scientific and objective mind demands a much clearer and surer method to conquer beauty. 1887, the bridge at Courbevoie. After the light foliage, the transparent colors of spring, comes the golden, deeper light of late summer. A critic claims that my technique is perfect for seascapes, but totally unsuitable for portraits. For the last three weeks, I've been working day and night on the models to prove that my technique is valid for all subjects. Just as a chemist separates matter, my eyes are clear prisms that break down the elements of light, transform them in the crucible of the imagination, and give them new meaning. I am searching for a secret geometry of forms. Painting is the art of giving depth to surface. 1889. I am painting the Eiffel Tower, which is still under construction. I want to contemplate this age of steel head-on and extract from it a work worthy of the rules of the universe, whose first law is rhythm. A bit higher. Fine. All right, bring those two in. Eighteen ninety one, the second exhibition of independent artists. No, 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 that one goes on the other wall over there. Spectral purity is the keystone of my technique. With that certainty in mind, I've been searching for an optical formula from the moment I held a brush in my hand. Please, gentlemen, the circus on the other side. So, you put Finney on that wall? Hmm. It's just right there. <coughs> Georges, don't you feel well? Oh, no, no, I'm fine. A bit of a sore throat, that's all. Dear Signac, if it weren't for him, there'd be no one to defend our divisionist art. He's the painter of every sea and every sailing ship. The Impressionists are going to be sorry they walked out on this exhibit. Well, I'm glad they did. It'll give us more space. You're right. I think it's time they put a bit of order in their palette. They throw their colors any which way in the name of inspiration. Ah, a pitiful excuse. And my circus is still not finished. <laughs> 